What's going on, GovCon Moneymakers? It's your girl, Sheena, a.k.a. Sheena Panur. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about government contracting versus property preservation, and we're going to get into it right after the intro. Hey, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Here on the Sheena Panur channel, I share information about government contracting, veteran business content, and other business tips. Okay, so for those who don't know, I did property preservation before I did government contracting. Um, I kind of leave that story out sometimes when I'm explaining how I got into government contracting because I was in real estate, started real estate kind of like 2014-ish. I flipped, landlord, I was doing wholesaling, the whole kit and caboodle, right? And of course, because I was too volatile, I realized I didn't want to be a landlord. This flipping thing was not flipping and this wholesaling thing was just absolutely full of birds, right? So uh, in between the real estate and getting into government contracting, I did have a brief period of time where I was doing property preservation. So for those who don't know what property preservation is, basically, I guess two levels of property preservation, right? So you have essentially the bank is some kind of way in charge of a property, right? And don't come for me to comments because I got into it and then quickly got out. So this is just my experience with property preservation. I'm not like an expert in it. I'm not gonna be teaching anything about it. This is just kind of how property preservation pushed me into government contracting or helped me understand government contracting a little bit more. When I did pro property preservation, actually it wasn't in between real estate and government contracting. I was doing government contracting, but it was during COVID is when I started property preservation. So basically property preservation is like the bank owns a property from my understanding and some kind of way they got to keep this property from whether it's getting fined by the city or state or by the county, and they have to either uh, make sure the grass is maintained, they have to make sure that the windows are boarded up, they have to make sure that this property is essentially preserved in some sort of way. If you ever heard of glazing, glazing is basically like putting stuff over windows so they don't break, or putting boarding over windows so they don't break, or blackening them and that type of thing. So like glazing, cutting the grass, um, changing the lock, those types of things are all within the property preservation um, realm. And to include junk removal. So if you've ever been to a property and you see that it has a whole bunch of junk just outside of the property, whether it was previous tenant, whether it just became a dumping ground for that particular area, chances are like the bank or some sort of other entity other than a person owns that property and they use small companies to preserve the property. So with me, I didn't have a direct connection with the bank. I was essentially like a subcontractor. So you can go out there on the interwebs and find how to do property preservation. There's gonna be several companies. They may have contracts with banks and so they just in different states and they need people that are gonna go out there and do this property preservation, right? So you might do junk haul You might, and you have to measure all these things by cubic feet, you have to buy square feet, by linear feet, all these types of things. And especially when it comes to cutting grass and hauling, uh, changing lock, that was like what took me out. Like I have a whole bunch of locks still in my basement right now because like changing the locks, you have to be able to like break into the house in order to change the lock. So it, was a, it could feel a little shady. Like my kids actually went with me on a couple of these property preservation. Initial review of the property is also like a part of the job. Like it's a separate line item to get paid. Going around Atlanta and doing a property preservation was just like a kind of a part of real estate for me. So in between me doing, you know, the real estate and then getting the government contracting during 2020, a lot of my stuff slowed down. Now it did eventually go up and we did have a lot of COVID cleaning uh, contracts, but it's, it kind of slowed down. So I got into the property preservation, took like a little mini course. I can't think of the um, lady's name online that does property preservation teaching, but basically just dove right into that and got into it and signed up on these portals that some of the property preservation companies that actually have the connections with the bank, or maybe they didn't have a connection with the bank. They may have also been a sub <laughs> under another large larger company and then they further subbed out um, this work to other companies who just say, oh, I want to do property preservation. So all that's fine and good. So basically what they want you to do, you go into portal and they need grass cut at these addresses, right? And so I had three companies I was working with and the first company that I worked with was probably like the best one when you try to figure out like how this process is working or what should that company be doing to help you? Or, you know, they were calling to, to ask, hey, are you able to go do change lock later today or by Saturday? And you know, you do yay or nay. And then they just say, okay, great. I'm gonna sign this job to you in the portal. 
you accept the job and then you go on and do great things. Like I said, the changing of the locks was the hardest thing for me. So I did end up having like a, um, a locksmith. I had a locksmith friend. He was able to go into these properties and change all the locks because he knew how to pick the lock. So they, they don't want you to just to damage like the door or um, you know alter the integrity of the windows or anything like that. They want you to be able to pick a lock and go into that property and change those locks. That was one line item. Cutting the grass and the bushes, basically doing like a, um, a landscaping was another part of the property preservation. Junk removal was a part of it. Also, like I said, initial review, because sometimes they want to make sure that the building is just still standing. And you have to take so many pictures. That's where it kind of got messed up for me with like the landscaping or even just cutting the grass, like just straight cutting grass um, without doing any bushes. A lot of the uh, landscaping companies that I was hiring, even if it was just like one guy with one lawnmower, they had to take like a hundred pictures. Not, sometimes it was a hundred, but with cutting grass, it wasn't typically 100 pictures, but with like initial review uh, of the property, they wanted like upward of over 50 pictures and you have to upload them in a certain portal. And I was running out of space on my phone it was getting crazy so when you're looking at it if you just think about think about a company who is saying we want to make sure this house is still standing right this property is still standing and so they want to make sure that they have every single angle of this property they want the front they want the back they want the side they want the side they want the inside all the rooms different angles of the rooms the carpet the floors the bathrooms the ceilings they want to the chimney every single aspect of this property to make sure that it's still standing and then also some of the things that they may have to fix and they and if there's something that needs to be essentially preserved they want to make sure that they can do that to to eliminate any further damage to this property so if you think about glazing where you put the boards up over the windows they want to make sure that okay we can try to save some of these windows or we're not going to get any squatters moving into these properties and this was ex very very prevalent in 2020 because a lot of uh, construction projects were completely abandoned we probably went to i'll say the whole time during me doing property preservation it was like April of 2020 to maybe it was it started getting warm so let's just say June it wasn't that long <laughs> I couldn't do it it was like April to June of 2020 and I mean I probably saw about me personally I saw about 50 houses and then I also had contractors go out to multiple houses and it was like every day with certain companies and then certain companies didn't have a lot so, you know, all that was cool. It was it was exciting, I guess. If you like to just get in your car and go do stuff. I mean, you're going to look at, especially the initial reviews. I really like those because you just go into a, ran a random location and you're just taking a bunch of pictures of a property. Now, I did have some interesting conversations with like neighbors with these properties because I, there was one particular where it was junk everywhere. It became a dumping ground and it was like downtown Atlanta and some of those areas that have been um, gentrified essentially and the neighbor you know it was like the house was kind of close but it was enough to where none of that debris was spilling over to the neighbor thank goodness and when i was taking pictures he was asking me like are you coming to fix this house because this is a pain in my blah blah blah, blah. i've contacted everybody and that's probably why they had a company come out there um, and of course I was a sub, but they probably had the initial company, the bank had an initial company come out and make sure that this, you know, see what's going on with this property because it becomes an eyesore, becomes, you know, a fineable property where they get the city will find whoever the uh, the ultimate owner of the property is, which is usually a bank or some sort of something, right? So it was really, really interesting, the types of conversations that I was having about these properties that I knew nothing about. Also, it was extremely, extremely, extremely low money. Or one of the things I really, really didn't like with the property preservation was that they would call you again, like say you didn't, you didn't take enough pictures, say you only took 10 pictures. They're like, you didn't take any pictures of the basement. It shows that this property has a basement. So you gotta go back out there, take pictures of the basement in order to get, to get your money. And the companies that I work for essentially were kind of like shady. So they like pay me through cash app. Oh, when you think about it, <laughs> I was just trying to bridge the gap during COVID, right? So it was just one of those things. So, but one of the things that it did help me um, when it came to government contracting I was doing mostly janitorial. I had done some flooring, but I hadn't really gotten into landscaping like that. I hadn't really got into any other type of construction at that point. And it did help me find people fast because I needed to find people probably the same day or the next day to uh, take on some of these projects that I said I was going to, 
you know, take on. So like the locksmith, the land, the grass cutting guy. Uh, I had someone that knew how to glaze, like those type of glazing, meaning boarding up windows. So I had, I had to find somebody fast in order to get these projects going. So it did help me with being trusting of my subs because kind of up until that point, I only had like really two subs that I used, one for janitorial and one for construction. And I didn't really want to use anyone else, but that was a good little testing ground with using property preservation as a as a way in <laughs> for these contractors to be vetted until they you know so they get on a big project and then i already know what to expect and i did lose some people over these projects i probably lost two landscapers or two grass cutters whatever you want to call them and like one construction guy because they're like this ain't enough money but then they just did it dirty they didn't really you know like say hey I, this is not enough money i'm sorry I'm gonna have to pass on the next one that you offer. Okay, cool, I get it, trust me. But they went on and, w and just kind of like ghosted me, which I do not like. So it was a really good way for me to get into government contracting, um, understanding a little bit better. Uh, would I recommend property preservation? Um, I have had some questions over time. I don't know how people just, I don't know if they just a they're just asking or maybe they think that property preservation is either the same thing or similar to government contracting. But throughout the years, I have had people ask me about property preservation and I will say, Maybe if you can get like a large volume of, of properties or a large volume, maybe they give you the whole Metro Atlanta area or maybe they give you a whole county or a whole city or something like that and it makes more sense. But when it came to me being essentially, I, I'm guessing I was a sub of a sub of a sub or maybe even a, a two subs down, the money just was so watered down that there was nothing left. So I would say when it comes to that, I probably wouldn't. Now, again, I'm not an expert on property preservation, so I probably did it all wrong, but it was like a little gap filler for that time during COVID when it was just crazy, it was bananas. And what's so crazy about, about it as well is, of course, we had COVID, um, so we couldn't go to certain locations. We There were projects, again, that were just stopped in the middle of the project because of COVID, like literally they had a sign saying, stopped because of pandemic, whatever the case is. And then also it was a civil unrest. So there were protests everywhere. It was crazy. So there were certain streets we couldn't go down because there were protests. So we couldn't get the work done. So things like that, you know, I guess you would never really would think about that, but you know, what do you, I mean, what are you gonna do? And that was uh, a problem with one of the companies that I was working with. They're like, oh my goodness, why can't you go? And I'm like, well, uh, boom, there's, do you not know what's going on in the real world right now? There's a lot of stuff going on in every single state and even throughout the world. So we can't fulfill this obligation that you have. So property pre preservation can probably be a good thing if you have, if you see the money works. Um, I would also say if a property preservation company approaches you, and they ask, can you, can you work on these properties? That's, I, Cause sometimes I get an email from a property preservation company only cause I think I might have been listed in some sort of large portal. There is a large portal where you kind of like sign up with each company and every now and then I'll get an email and they'll ask and I'll ask how much is it? How much are you paying for grass per square foot or however large that size is? How much are you paying for initial review? How much are you paying for glazing? How much are you paying for anything that they're asking, junk removal? Um, and there, like I said, there is a young lady out here on uh, YouTube and I'm probably, I'm gonna see if I can find her and link her in the description below. But um, I'm gonna, you know, advise that you just ensure that your pricing makes sense. If it's something that you already do and it just adds to what you do, then that's great too, cause you're outside all day and you just wanna add this to it. I'm not saying it's a terrible thing. I'm just saying that it's something that you need to make sure that your, your math is mathing. So I um, wanted to share my story about uh, property preservation, give you a little bit of advice. I was only in it for like two, three months and I was like, this is not enough money for your girl. I probably made total, it, out of the two, three months that I did it, and mind you, let's say that I went out uh, a total of, either I went out or I sent someone out for a total of 30 total days out of maybe a 60 to 90 day period, and I made maybe about 7,000, meh. That's not, actually, no, that couldn't have been 7,000, because that sounds way too high. Maybe like 4,000. <laughs> 
There's a big difference between four and seven. But I want to say it's maybe about 4,000. It was three years ago, so forgive me, you know. But it is something that could work if you work it correctly or if you already have a crew. That was also something that the lady said in the video. If you don't have crews, it's going to be hard, especially some of these outskirt areas. And usually, i got to remember, like some of these companies who are looking for you to go and do the work, they're getting quotes from other companies, just like any other government contracting thing. So it's kind of like, okay, I'm not going to sit here and waste all this time giving you a price if you're just going to go with the lowest person. And then, you know, they're looking for people in the, some of the outskirts areas. If you live in a rural area, it might be more advantageous for you. But I quit that sh and I can't, I couldn't go back unless the math was completely mathing. And I also had a direct connection to the bank. That's probably the only way I would ever go back because now I have more crews and all that kind of thing. But yes, I wanted to share my experience about property preservation. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Please, 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 because it helps the algorithm. You guys try to keep me lit. You know what I mean? I'm trying to hit this 10,000 subscribers by the end of July. So help me get there and also, feel free to send a super thanks, okay? That's a new feature on YouTube. So you send me a super thanks. Let me know that you love my content. And then you might even like me a little bit. <laughs> so until next time, guys, it's your favorite veteran.